Well, hey there, everybody. Welcome to our channel. Uh, my name's Chris, and we are doing a mock draft every single week leading up to the 2023 fantasy football season. These mock drafts are sponsored by AG1, and I will tell you more about AG1 in just a little while. We want to thank them for sponsoring and also for making a good product that I take. But anyway, I digress. Uh, I am here with a long, long, long time friend of mine, depressingly long. Uh, it's Craig Clark. Uh, Craig, have you ever been on the YouTube channel before? I have not. I have not. Uh, but 30 years? Is that how long it's been? Is that too long? No, I, no. Like seven. Seven. Been about seven years. Yeah, seven we've times a multiple of four and a half. Yes, yes. <laughs> well, that's fast math. I don't really... Uh, that means you're going to do well in this thing. Um, so, Craig, you may remember Craig Clark from such podcasts as uh, my podcast. For three years, he was on every single week. And uh, he, he picked DraftKings and was just great at it. I help people and, with uh, money. Taking money. Yeah, help. Yep, he was mad at his money, but he was uh, happy with everybody else's money, and uh, and and he was actually he guested this past season in 2022 one time when Jake couldn't make it as a favor to me, I had to pull his arm. But I actually didn't have to like convince you too hard to do this mock draft with me. Thank you for coming. Yeah, I mean this seems pretty fun. It gets me uh, in shape, gets me rounded up, <laughs> and uh, 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 I watched your previous you one. Said... Well, okay. Well, go ahead. Well, when you said in, when it gets you in shape, I was, I was like, you're not in shape. Oh, you meant draft wise. <laughs> Got it. Okay. No. Okay. I've actually been on a diet. I, I won't show you the whole thing, but, right. uh, <laughs> well, I'm glad to hear that. Actually. I'm, I myself have just, I, I'm, people notice now I'm aboard the yacht again, right? Wow. I'm in Los Angeles. I'm in my, my normal YouTube environs aboard the yacht. And I just came from the big gym that we have here on the yacht. So extremely sweaty doing this mock draft. Um, but you know what? Uh, I feel like that just is going to lend uh, like an air of hard work to the whole thing. And um, I'm, I'm down for it. So the format this week, uh, we are doing different. We're going to try to do different mock draft format each week, obviously, to try to get y'all familiar and get y'all psyched and closer to your formats and your various leagues. Craig, today we're going to do a full PPR, but we're also going to give a point and a half per tight end reception. So we're giving a tight end premium here to try to boost the best of the tight ends into the realm of uh, more higher draftability than we might typically do. Uh, folks who watched last week's video with Jake Trowbridge, which I'm sure celebrity producer Dave Piper is currently linking to somewhere, one of these two, I don't know which one, uh, you can see us wait on tight end probably ridiculously too long, and we probably won't do that today. Uh, although the 10 bots that we will be drafting with may also take tight ends a little earlier, and that might complicate things. Uh, we also um, asked Fantrax, uh, the league that we're using uh, for our mock draft, to um, be a little more balanced with quarterbacks and not go so qu quarterback heavy early like they did last week. So we'll get a hopefully a little more realism. We're not sure about that, but we think so. Fantrax, a sponsor of the podcast and um, uh, extremely customizable platform. I really recommend them. That's why we're using them here. So Craig, in your prep, uh, you're going to pick what? Uh, you're picking sixth. Sixth, yeah. in, in your prep, which I know you spent hours uh, <laughs> at, as you were dieting, uh, how, were you, how were you folding in the notice? You're starving to death. You're, you're thinking about tight ends. You're, uh, what somebody say, hungry for tight ends. Uh, how, were you, how did you prep differently than you might otherwise? I did uh, do somewhat of a deep dive into the tight ends to see if I do want to take them early. Okay. And, uh, and maybe I will. So, maybe uh, I, I will. I don't know if it'll get to me, if a certain guy will get to me at the sixth pick, but I might take him. <laughs> well, it's funny because in full PPR with no tight end premium, apparently I'm told that Travis Kelsey's going higher than six anyway, which yeah. don't do that. Everybody out there don't do that. But um, yeah, I pick I pick 11th. So it's going to be you at six, me at 11. I'll be close to the turn. Oh my goodness. Jake really had it fun last week when he had to make two picks in rapid succession while still talking. Now that that's up to me. Um, so... <laughs> I think we're ready to go, so uh, follow, folks will follow along. We'll do this in real time. You'll watch us. We're not live, but uh, tell us down in the comments as we make these picks. Tell us whether you think we did a good job or whether we left terrible meat on the bone that you would prefer we not do. So here we go. Uh, we're going to do these first f five picks pretty quick. We had Justin Jefferson in a full PPR go one. Christian McCaffrey go two. Jamar Chase go three. Austin Eckler go four. Travis Kelsey, oh, breaks Craig's heart. It and did. Now I don't know what to do. <laughs> <laughs> so tell me, Craig, would you have taken him had he been there at six? I would have taken him. Yes, I would have taken him. You uh, think at a point, point, point and a half per reception is just too much cheat code? 
It's, right. It's, it's just he's 200 already points. got a, yeah. yeah. He's already got a difference between him and the next guy. Right. Or at least the first couple and the next guys after that, right. and you know, it just seemed worth it. But I'm not going to take it. I tied in now. Okay. Uh, so I'm. Uh, you're not going to follow my ranks. I know you're going to follow your own ranks, right? No, I'm going to do something you don't like that other people are doing. <laughs> you're taking a taking Mahomes. No, I'm not. All right, Bijan Robinson. Uh, now, Craig, tell me what city that you're you're uh, you're you're currently recording from. I'm, what city are you in? I might be in Austin. Uh, <laughs> might be a fan. That is a that is a that is a homer pick. It's defensible. It's defensible. It's not what I would do, but it is defensible. Uh, maybe a little less defensible in this this format. All right. So then we had Cup, Tyree Kill, Stephon Diggs, and Saquon Barkley. Breaks my heart a little bit. Uh, I certainly would have taken him there at eleven. Uh, so here I am in the first round, and I'm checking my own ranks so as not to make a stupid pick. Uh, yeah, I'm probably just gonna do the guy I get a lot. I guess. I don't see anyone else. So I uh, let me let me. I got to do this in real time, folks. Don't get mad at me. Yeah, I'm going to do it. Uh, in the name of Chubb. One more in the name of Chubb. Uh, not an elite uh, receiver, but uh, elite player. So uh, he, he belongs where about where I took him. Like, I'm not mad that other people didn't take him. That's about, I would have taken Barkley over him. Uh, when, I, when you see someone in a full PPR take Nick Chubb in the first round, do you just go, do you rub your hands together and go, <laughs> This is like candy from a baby, baby. I mean, in a full PPR, it's it's harder hard to justify. A, a, but I mean, Barkley went first. So once all those main backs go, now now you're gone to uh, you know your philosophy, right? Uh, like, do you want the running back, or do you want to go more of a zero or a zero and a, or uh, taking your running backs late? So if you want to have a running back now, Chubb is a fine choice, right? It wasn't so much that I wanted to take a running back. It was more a uh, fact that Nick Chubb is going to win the rushing title, that Nick Chubb is going to rush for 1,600 yards, that I don't need the, the whatever, 35 extra catches that Nick Chubb's not going to get me. That's 35 points over 17 games. That's two points a week. That's not going to be the difference between Nick Chubb being worth the first rounder or not, in my opinion. But that could just be me being stubborn. It's clearly I didn't take an elite pass catching back. And uh, down in the comments, feel free to just laugh hysterically at the idea that anyone would take Nick Chubb in the first round of a full PPR draft. Okay, so uh, we got a couple of receivers go after me. I got a big, long wait now after my second round pick. And here we are. We're, we're, we're uh, posting this thing on August 10th. And so we don't have the full breadth of training camp behind us to know exactly what the Raider offense looks like. No, it's not Josh Jacobs. I would love to do that, but I'm not going to do that. <laughs> Uh, in fact, it's going to be Devonte Adams and you know what? I, I am of the mindset that Jimmy Garoppolo is actually kind of a good quarterback for both Jacoby Myers and Devonte Adams. And I, I understand the knee jerk reaction when anybody praises Jimmy Garoppolo is, is, is to say that's awesome for the 10 games that he plays and then good luck with the rest of it. So I, I understand, but Adams, it feels like looked awfully good when Jared Stidham was the quarterback last year. So uh, I'm just going to feel fine with Devonte Adams. You're not going to make fun of me for that one. No, I think there's a clear tier here. I mean, he's the last guy in that tier and you, you take him. So. Well, I did take him. Uh, I actually don't think he's the last guy in that tier. I think maybe Cooper cup is, but that that's a conversation for another day. All right. So uh, we've had, I won't like enumerate every single pick for all 16 rounds of this draft because um, producer Dave Piper would be, annoyed with me, but early on, it's a good idea to just mention Patrick Mahomes, the first quarterback goes, uh, Amon, Amon Ross St. Brown in a full PPR defensible here. Josh Allen goes, Derek Henry goes and uh, another full PPR running back. How dare you? But I like the pick there. I'm, I'm happy with that. I think the non PPR quote unquote, non PPR guys get, uh, too punished in a full PPR. And, uh, so Chubb and Henry should be gone by now. That's just fine. So here we are. Uh, your what's your thought process heading into the second pick here in the second round? Uh, I am going to start loading up on pass catchers for a long time. I'm not going to uh, uh, dip back into the running back too too soon now. I'm just happy All with right. having one, and uh, and go with the PPR flow with this, and and we'll see, we'll see. So I'll just take, I'll just take a, a dude. Take I'll a just... dude. It's Jalen Waddle. I can confirm that guy's a dude. Mm -hmm. absolutely can confirm. So at the end of the second round, actually, Dave Piper, I think you're going to pause it for me. We'll talk about Waddle in a second. But first, I would like to talk about our sponsor, AG1. 
I actually am in LA where I have a treasure trove of AG1. Here's one of my uh, packages of it. It's a powder that you mix in water. I take it uh, with water every single morning. It provides a uh, boost in the gym from whence I have just come. I can confirm, Craig, that I did not bonk at the gym. I can I say thank you, AG1, for that. Um, I think the best thing, you know, it has all 70-something vitamins and minerals and great, great stuff. The, my favorite thing about it, honestly, and the reason you take it on an empty stomach is that it has a probiotic in it. So unlike just taking a fistful of vitamins and slugging them down, there's actually something in the powder that causes the vitamins to be incorporated into your body and not just pass through you. And I really, really feel it. Um, I, I, you know, you can, you can test it for, for very reasonable amount. And, uh, I really think you'll notice a difference. It's good for immunity. If you travel a lot, if you've got kids, if they got colds all the time, uh, I really totally am a believer in AG1. I take it every single morning and you know, cousin Josh, Craig, cousin Josh takes it every single morning and that you've seen cousin, cousin Josh is short, but that dude is jacked. He yeah, is he's built. Yeah. And, f and so trust me when I tell you that AG1 works for Josh, it should work for you too. Uh, if you want to check it out, go to drinkag1.com slash Harris. It's a great way to support the channel. We really appreciate them supporting these mock drafts. Uh, drinkag1.com slash Harris, and uh, you'll get five free travel packs, and you'll get uh, vitamin D, and it's a great deal. So uh, we've got a link, and uh, please please follow it. All right, so we've been through two rounds here, Craig, and uh, we let's continue. We'll see what the bots do. We've seen some a couple of non-PPR. Well, Jacobs is a eh, – they're all PPR running back. Stevenson – I like there, man. Uh, I like that. You wouldn't have taken Stevenson in the third round if he'd made it back to you because you're just wide receiver focused? Uh, right now, I, I I wouldn't have taken him. But, I mean, he's okay. a great back, obviously. Right. Yeah, I mean, if he catches balls like he did last year, there's a question of whether he'll do that. But anyway, I digress. Mark Andrews goes right in front of you. Yeah, So yeah. Mock Team 5 has seen the tight end premium and said, I know what I'll do. So I, Mock Team 5, I believe Mock Team 5 might have been the moron last week, too. <laughs> uh, so Mock Team 5 just, just like, saw the video and decided, you know, let's give it to Harris. Yeah. Right, up the old, right up the old pooper. Uh, so the two elite tight ends are gone. Were you yeah. going to take him? Were you going to take Mark Andrews? There? I wasn't. I wasn't going to take him. Okay. But, right. uh, uh, you know, in an auction in this sort of format, I might see doing that just to screw my other teammates, everybody else. <laughs> <laughs> you know, get the get the uh, uh, you know, you know, position out of the way. Get the uh, extra position taken care of. But uh, uh, other than that, in a in a draft, I don't know that I'd do that. But. Yeah, that would be unwise. We we're not recommend mock team five bot. Uh, we're not we're not recommending following that strategy because, I've, you know, I remember hearing that twenty years ago. I'm gonna corner the market and then I'll be able to trade one of them and you'll never get the equivalent value. It's <laughs> just never going to happen. Uh, but they've sure got their flex set. And listen, you can, you can justify it. They have a flex. Mm -hmm. It does. It is still point and a half. It's not, it's every tight end on your team is going to count as point and a half PPR. It's just, they're going to be behind the eight ball on so many other positions. All right. So uh, you weren't going to take Mark Andrews. It sounded like you were ready to take another receiver. Yep. Let's hear it. Well, I'm taking a guy who uh, was great two years ago and was a total dud last year. But a lot of people, I know even you go for the, his teammate, but I'm going for the for the high, you know, uh, win uh, high risk reward guy, and I'm going to take Debo. I mean, I love Debo. I, I think in a PPR I might take Ayuk, but uh, I, I love I love Debo. I'm, I'm I'm I think I'm higher than the market on Debo. Um, I might have a chance to take Ayuk here, but let's see. The problem with hosting this and then also having to make my picks in some reasonable facsimile order to how I actually have them ranked so that everyone in the comments doesn't go, aha, <laughs> you say you would take that guy, but you didn't take him. Uh, yeah, that, that actually, yeah. Um, you know, I, I am, boy, I, I'll just, I can tell you my thought process here. I'll probably get him on the way back if I want to. I didn't lower Jonathan Taylor that much yet. I don't believe as of August 10th, that this is really about his ankle at all. I think this is a hold-in, and uh, he's perfectly healthy and as healthy as whatever. Uh, I, I mean, I guess maybe am I being a cons conspiracist by saying that? The guy yeah. <laughs> asks for a better contract, says he's unhappy, decides not to practice, and then suddenly, oh, it's like Rodney Dangerfield, oh, my arm. You know, mm -hmm. like, uh, it, it, do you feel like this is a bad, like, should Jonathan Taylor be falling to the bottom of third rounds? Uh, certainly not if he's anything like he used to be. And the only thing that's going to keep him from it is either injury or a holdout. And he's 
he's not holding out. I think he's just trying to make a point, you know, like you're suggesting. All right. Well, so uh, we have had Etienne go. It's just I'm trying to look for anybody n- near him in my ranks to have come the excuse not to take him. Uh, has Devonte Smith gone? I believe so. Yes, first Devante round. Of, Smith first is pick gone. Of the third. First pick of the third. I think I have to. Well, I, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to like tempt fate and assume that mock team 10 isn't going to do Jonathan Taylor. So I got to find the highest remaining receiver on my board. You tell me if, uh, has DK Metcalf gone? Yes, he has. Has Chris Olave gone? Man, oh man. Hopkins gone. I don't think Hopkins. No, Hopkins is there. That's a tough one. I don't know if I can make myself do that. We've, we certainly in this full PPR have gone very receiver heavy. Let me ask you this, and you can give an answer while I can actually get my thoughts together and make a decent pick. Mm-hmm. When you see a run like this, when receivers, when it goes so receiver heavy, and I'm not saying it's like wrong because it's full PPR, mm-hmm. uh, but but we are clearly in the realm of receivers who are not guaranteed the the whole pie. When you're talking about Debo, Metcalf, T. Higgins, we're we're in the realm of of. Uh, a little bit of speculation. What's your strategy? Do you feel desperate to like make sure you get someone or do you want to zig while somebody else zags? You know, I was the zagger before, you know, I think there's been a paradigm shift in the last two years with receivers that things have really that, and I was the guy that always took the receivers. So it's made me sad that, <laughs> that this has happened. And uh, uh, so I am still going for receiver, right? Uh, Cause the reason the running backs have been devalued is because they haven't produced as well. And uh, it, and I think the rest of the world is caught up to it. So I know it's, ter- it's issue- not necessarily great. Yeah, the issue that I have with that is just that it, how much of a difference is there among the receivers? Now, you could also mm-hmm. say how much of a difference is there among the, the running back. The running back that I'm going to get at 311 or 511 or 611 could, could kind of be the same. But right. I could make the argument that the same with the wide receiver, which, you know, in a tight end premium league makes me tempted to go tight end. And you know what? By, yeah. uh, by golly, I just did it. <laughs> and then let's see if I played it right. Amari Cooper and Keenan Allen go after me. So if I yeah. want Jonathan Taylor, that I have done it right. And I am going to take the wild swing on Jonathan Taylor. For those of you watching this video on August 30th, when Jonathan Taylor has been ruled out for the season because of his ankle injury, uh, don't laugh at me. But I have, in fact, selected my second running back. I'll take the chance. It's a high risk high risk proposition. And now here go the running backs. Whoa, wow. four in a row, four in a row, and then fields. And it leads up to you. Mm-hmm. And you, you are, your inclination is to do what? Uh, the receiver. Man. Well, no, I, I'm, I'm going to get a pass catcher. I think, I think I'm going to take a tight end, but, okay. uh, uh, you know, looking at mock team 10 all the way at the end, he went running back zero. So wow. I was I was expecting Taylor to go because I thought you were going to blow it with that, but no, you did it perfectly. <laughs> I don't know why you'd say that. It's not like you've been in fan- dra- fantasy drafts with me for twenty something years. <laughs> yeah, I, I wouldn't have risked it. I, I would have taken uh, Taylor with the with the third round pick, but uh, I think you did it perfectly. So. Kaboom! All right, so you think you think about your pick while I vamp a little bit. Oh no, you didn't have to think. You took Hawkinson. Um, Hawkinson stand out to you as a as a clear, like in a tight end premium league, the line is clearly going to get drawn somewhere mm-hmm. uh, close to Hawkinson, whether it's just above him, just below him, a couple spots below him. Is is you're taking him in the fourth round in a tight end premium league? Mm. Is that a vote for? Yeah, I think Hawkinson is is on that. Second non-cal- half of last year, he was okay. he was in that way. So let's see if Vikings. that continues. Right, right? the Vikings so, time. Yeah. So uh, all right. Gonna... So we've seen. Um, like, wow, a lot of receivers went after you. I'm going to need a wide out. That's, that's a lot of receivers to keep going. Um, there's some pretty darn good running backs left. I wonder, I wonder if that's where your head's at. Mm. No, I think I'm, I'm still going with the pass. And this guy I want, he's at the top of their, he's at the top of their list. And uh, I'm sort of high on Jacksonville. And I, I want him. So I'm getting him right here and now. Sure. I'm just fine with it. All right. We're coming around to me. Dalvin Cook, who as of our recording, this doesn't have a team. He goes. I'm fine with that. Uh, oh, I would have I would have been interested in Pittman there. He went right before me. Um, impossible for me to keep track of who's taken <laughs> as I run my uh, incredible yammer. Um, 
Let's see. I think he's probably available. I, I think I am inclined here probably to go wide receiver because we are starting three of them. Um, have we seen... Oh, no, okay. I, I am going to take Ayuk. I mean, I would have actually considered Ayuk in the, in the other you know, in the other turn before, so I'm not going to take any chances with them. Uh, I am pretty high on Ayuk this year. I don't mind where you took Debo. I just think Ayuk should go closer to him. So mm-hmm. there he goes. Uh, we had DeAndre Swift in a full PPR. Could could wind up being really good. Tyler Lockett was the other receiver I was going to take. <laughs> and I felt so smart waiting on him, but he was probably about next on my list. Um, so I have two running backs, two receivers, a tight end. Uh, when you're, l- let me ask you a question so that you can vamp a little bit while I think, um, let's say you, you drafted a balance team like this, you know, you got two, two, and then the premium position as well. And we're not going to go quarterback here. I'm pretty sure. Uh, do you feel obliged here in round? This is the point where people start looking at their roster and saying best available or position. What I, there's not a, there's not a one size fits all answer for it, but like, what's your tendency here? Round six, round seven. If I have my second running back like you do, I'm definitely taking a wide receiver. I I, I just don't want to load up on having five running backs uh, that are pretty good that I can only start maybe two or three of them. Uh, so I, I prefer to have my uh, util uh, uh, or my flex position available for, for wide receivers. So I would be taking a wide out. But uh, that's my bias. I like wide outs. And that's sort of what I do, at least in auctions. I do that quite a bit. I really load up on the wide outs. So I think... You're also you're also kind of like wanting to read the room. I, I'm much more, I think, a best available, but you're mm-hmm. also wanting to read the room, and this room is wildly wide out heavy, and I don't want to get shut out. Um, so I'm probably just going to go I, the player I think is next on my list. I in real time, it's very hard for me to know for absolute sure. We usually, you know, aren't r- running our traps as we're making picks, but uh, I believe that Chris Godwin is next on my list, mm-hmm. and in a full PPR and a. I mean, heaven knows I don't love the Baker Mayfield jazz experience, blues explosion, whatever I call him on the podcast. Um, And I don't know anything about Kyle Trask at all. So we'll see. But it's Chris Godwin for me. And we'll see. We'll see if that winds up looking bad uh, because there are some some running backs I would like. Some tight ends are going here. We we don't feel bad. We we didn't miss on the tight end train. A couple running backs go. I don't particularly want Rashad White, although I understand in a full PPR – you know, there's a world where it, it works out really well for him. I just don't think I want to pay sticker price for him. All right, man. Well, you're at three receivers, a yeah, running back be... and a tight end, and you're not yeah. drafting for need here. You're just going to go, nope, give me a flex. I just want right. I want wide receivers. I want one more nice wide out that I can stuff my bench. So I got one more, and then I'll start being more wise. Well, he's not even a bench, right? We have flexes. We have two yeah. flexes in this, in, this, in this particular league, so he's not necessarily a bench. Uh, but you are you are going to be uh, this is this is I mean next week we're having Denny Carter on and we're really going to get to see zero RB in action. You're playing one RB, right? You, one th- RB. Through through six rounds, you're playing one RB. Um, but yeah, the way I, I don't know if you heard the podcast where I did the Deontay Johnson review. I mean, he's still really good. Like this is the zero touchdown thing was weird, but he's still excellent. So I'm I'm happy with that pick. All right, made it back around to you. Obviously, you're going to take another tight end here. No, no, I don't know what you're no gonna I'm going to take a QB. Uh, are you really? And I'm going to take one that people are going to be scared to death of. Oh, I yeah. I think he's a, he's a, uh, if he's healthy, he could win you the league, but I don't think he'll be healthy, but I'm going to take him anyway. It's a risk reward type thing. But I, I really, I really oh, like wow. his play. So, okay. That isn't who I thought you were going to pick. We'll see if the guy who uh, I thought yeah, you were going to pick the, makes the, it to the, me. Right. And he does. Yeah. I mean, I'll take the QB too because I, I think this is weird. I think this is a fan tracks thing, to be honest. I'm not insulting fan tracks, but seeing Joe Burrow last week last as long as he did and then seeing it mm-hmm. again this week, this is a default, a weird default rank for Joe Burrow. And obviously, we're drafting with 10 bots that are drafting based on the default ranks in some measure. And so, therefore, if you and I aren't taking the guy who's like out of step ranks wise, mm-hmm. he's just not going to go. Joe right. Burrow's not going the seventh round in any drafts. Yeah, no way. No I should chance. have taken like, him. I mean, if I was a smart person, but I wanted Tua. Tua is who I wanted from the beginning, so that's who right. I took. And Tua didn't go to the University of Texas. You know that, right? He might have gone to. He might have beaten the University of Texas. <laughs> he, he he might have. That might have happened. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to take Burrow. I wouldn't normally be all that interested in a quarterback, but and, and it is for the you know for the purposes of uh, the usefulness of the video to the people watching. 
<laughs> it's not that useful because Joe Burrow, like, again, we're, we're po posting this on August 10th. You know, we, I just don't imagine that a pulled calf is a reason that Joe Burrow should be the 10th quarterback off the board. What, how many have gone here? Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. He literally will be the 10th quarterback. To, I mean, that's dumb, right? So right. I benefit from a silly moment. Evan Engram goes, AJ Dillon goes. I'm going to just go ahead and tell you, Craig, that I was not about to take AJ Dillon. <laughs> Uh, I was not, I was not a heartbreaker for me. You know, Ingram is the guy that I would have tried to get late as the tight end. Uh, but I didn't think oh, if you hadn't, late. right. Right. If you hadn't gone Hawkinson, you mean, right? Right. If I hadn't gone Hawkinson. Yeah. I I mean, hadn't you were going to, right. You weren't going to do the Kelsey Andrews thing. Oh, I mean, right. you're, I no, gonna... you're no mock team five. Let's face it. <laughs> <laughs> no. And, but it would have been a point PPR, not a point and a half for the, for the tight end. And I would have tried to get Ingram late. Because you wouldn't have taken Hawkinson as early as you yeah. did. I get it. Okay. Um, I'm going to take another risk at, at this point in a draft. I don't, you know, mostly I don't think this guy goes this late. Um, you know, I, 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 let me make sure. Who do I have higher? Just on my own ranks. Yeah, I'm going to take Brees Hall. Yeah. Um, you know, it's a, it's a risk reward thing. But I, and again, I, I don't imagine he lasts that late in a lot of human drafts, but he lasted here, so I'll do it. Wow, look at the receivers go, man. Wow. Yeah. That is just a lot of receivers. You played it right, not get not taking running backs, although I did steal Brees Hall if you wanted him. Uh he was he was one or the other that I was searching for. Now I'm just gonna take a guy to win the playoffs with because he's not gonna win me the beginning of the year. So this, <laughs> okay. I know so I know guy, who you're taking this time. Yep. <laughs> Alvin Kamara goes, uh, we know he's missing the first three weeks, but of course, if he's going here, it's too late probably. And, and yeah, I don't, again, another, another case where I don't imagine he'll, he'll last that long in human drafts, um, gets back around to wow. you. What's the Quentin wow? Johnson, uh, going nice and early. I, I would have liked him. Okay. But, uh, you're, you're an enthusiast. You're enthusiastic about Quentin Johnston. Why is that? Uh, He's what the, the, that team needs. Mike Williams likes to get hurt. And, oh, okay. Uh, and isn't I like he Mike Williams? Is, isn't he sort of Mike Williams? Well, uh, we'll see. We'll see how he gets when he goes, goes up against the big boys. Okay. Um, I mean, I, I, I feel like I've been so – I don't know about Quentin Johnston. You've certainly watched more of him. I, I saw him like two games, the national semifinal mm -hmm. and the national final. I don't know that much about him. But um, it strikes me that what I was told Mike Williams was going to be, now I'm being told that Quentin Johnston is going to be. I don't know. It doesn't. It doesn't make me super enthusiastic, especially in a full PPR. But maybe, maybe I'm wrong. What do you think? Uh, I, I, I love the guy. Okay. Like I love. I love certain players. I love like ATN. I didn't get him obviously, but uh, there are certain players I really, really like, uh, and he's one of them. I, I like him in college, and then I just love him forever in the pros to my to my detriment. Right? We'll see. <laughs> to your detriment. All right. Well, uh, are you, are you to the point where you have filled out a lineup? Uh, except for kicker and D, I think I, I, I could, I could field the whole lineup. And in fact, uh, in this league, in this week, we're actually not going to do kicker and D. So we're just going to okay. draft all the way through. Cause it's useless right. for the, for the folks watching. I, yeah. I think you have one flex to go maybe. Is that right? Okay. Well, I'm going to take a, uh, I'm loading up on a certain team. Okay. I'm going to take a rookie off that team. It's okay. Miami. All uh, right. and uh, I don't know that he'll get back to me. He probably will, but he might not. And I want him. So I'm going to take a chain. All right. So this is uh, this is uh, a pre-existing feeling about a player. You another right. one who you just l loved in college. Loved in college could really fly. Right. Super so. fast. Super small. So do you? I mean, ninth round is early. Early. Mm -hmm. It's a full PPR. There's a world where the Jeff Wilsons and Raheem Mostert's don't know how to catch the ball, and maybe he catches a bunch of passes. But there's also a world where, as a rookie, especially, he's a gadget guy. You just you're you're saying basically my first pick where I don't have to use him in the starting lineup, A-Chain is somebody I'm simply, tar I'm just going to target. Right, yeah, I'm targeting him, and uh, he's a luxury. Uh, I'm actually pretty pleased sure. with my lineup, with who I've gotten so far. I've gotten most of the kind of How players. nice for you. I, I, so uh, <laughs> I'm going to take my luxury pick here, because I'm not sure he'll make it back to me. That's, that's basically it. Um, I, it's hard for me to stick to my, um, my own ranks, because I'm, yeah, I'm yammering. I, I'm, I'm just going to take best available, and uh, I'll, I'll, I'll take another chance on J.K. Dobbins. Yeah. 
when we look back at this mock draft, do you imagine that it will live in infamy that you took Devon Achain before I took J.K. Dobbins? Do you imagine that that'll be something that I text you about for the next <laughs> 10 years? It's really going to have to matter. <laughs> I mean, it's going to be J.K. Dobbins goes for 2,400 years, 2,400 yards. And, oh, that's the threshold. Yeah. 2,400 yards uh, uh, to, to, or it didn't total matter. Total yards. How about that? Total yards. Oh, 2,400 total <laughs> yards. Oh, that's, that's a much easier to acquire. Yeah, yeah. That would be an NFL record by like, you know, hundreds of yards, yeah. but like that's all it would require. That's it. No, not, not a big deal. Other yeah. than that, I don't expect to hear from you about it. But yeah. <laughs> Uh, do I have any receivers that I know are available that are on the list? Huh? Hmm. Her. I'm not going to do that guy. I did him last week. People gave me grief over it. I'll wait. I'm not taking that guy. Um, do I have, yeah, I just don't know what players are available. I got to imagine. It's dumb if I, it's a great video if I go, hey, is that guy available? <laughs> everybody has that guy in their league. Or everybody, everybody has that person in their league yeah. who wasn't paying attention, who's drunk, who was like, dude, um, oh, sorry, guys, this is my turn. Hey, is um, uh, Saquon Berkeley available? <laughs> yeah, dude, we're ninth round. Yeah, no, he's not available. AJ Brown, where is he? I can't find him on the list. <laughs> who, who in our league is that guy? In large, who is that? Is it Doug? Is it the... Uh... <laughs> Doug is not watching this video, so it's okay. He's newly returned to the country. He has no idea. So that <laughs> makes me happy that you said that. <laughs> very, very, very happy. Um, boy, I don't like any of the receivers that are left, buddy. <laughs> I don't love it. I'll take Elijah Moore. I'll take the shot. I did film review on him on the show. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, last year was such a mess with the Jets, and now he's obviously been traded to the Browns. I, I, I don't think he's an alpha I think he was way oversold to us. He's, you know, I, you, you, you are one who apparently does fall in love with the kids, but the, the rookie receivers just get a, an undue amount of love. Everyone is going to be what Garrett Wilson was last mm -hmm. year. Everyone, seven guys in a class, right? And Elijah Moore two years ago was absolutely that guy. And I think we now know isn't going to be that level of player, but could be a pretty decent number too. Yeah. You know, and it's going to be one player out of nine that hit that way, right? That, you're really right. taking a huge my, variation there to get there, but and, and some years none of them. My hit. point, exactly. Some point none of them hit. I mean, Nikhil Harry, right? But like, although that year, like six of them hit, just not Nikhil Harry. Uh, my point is that like, there's not a lot of uh, negative cost associated with pumping the tires of rookie receivers, because even if they screw and they aren't good three years in, that's okay because you've already since then you've had two years of other guys you were frothing at the mouth over, right? It's an easy industry to be in, just over over promoting rookie receivers. All right. So Zay Flower, speaking of rookie receivers, uh he goes uh to mock team seven, who uh didn't go very wide receiver heavy, uh needed Zay Flowers yeah, I, to fill in I a roster. Taken Zay Flowers here. He went uh he was the guy. So now I'm gonna okay. I'm gonna get a handcuff. Oh my gosh. Don't do it. Don't do, don't do a handcuff already. <laughs> well, that's a unique case. I don't think that's a terrible pick. I, you know, as far as when he should go, that's a hard question to ask. Mm -hmm. I think if anybody is really taking anybody to task for something they do in the double digit rounds, they need to just like let the oxygen mask fall and like take a, take a deep breath because it's the, it's the double digit rounds of a fantasy draft. Like calm down. Uh, you know, I, I think especially because you took the plunge so early on Bijan, it's fine. Like I don't, people, people ask that question a lot, especially beginning fantasy players. Like, okay, I know about handcuffs. When should I do it? Mm -hmm. At a place where you feel like you've got your starters and you would be mad at yourself if it didn't work. You know, if you didn't, if you did, if you waited and he went later. So I'm perfectly happy with what you did there. And, uh, um, and I'm going to do something else you won't recommend, at least between you and I. And, and <laughs> no, no, I, I, I didn't mind the Algier. But uh, uh, there's a good quarterback still left, and I have a really risky quarterback. So I'm going to take a good quarterback. Okay. So, so I have two. I don't need two. But right. I... Well, yeah, and, and it, it does seem to me when we've d d done these couple of fan tracks, again, like Lawrence is just lower in the ranks than – I mean, if he's going way after Anthony Richardson, it's arguable that Richardson should go earlier because of the running. Mm -hmm. It's arguable. But I think most people are going to have Lawrence higher. So, again, it may just be kind of funky quarterback ratings, but why not take advantage of it? 
I'm perfectly fine with it. Okay, now I'm going to do it. Now, now you can't get mad at me. MikeThomasHammy.com. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I <laughs> left him there. That's for you. <laughs> I'm just going to I'm just going to try it in these double digit rounds. I'm just going to try it. It doesn't hurt me. I'm just going to try it. Uh I don't I don't want any of these remaining receivers. You probably couldn't make me take them in the 16th round. No, that's not true. Um and uh I don't really feel I don't I don't really have handcuffable running backs, you know, like uh Jerome Ford okay, but I don't really know what he is yet. I like him on kickoff returns and he was nicked up, I guess, a little bit in training camp. I don't really consider him to be like a, at least with Algier, I think he would do a pretty good job if we had no B. John Robinson. Jonathan Taylor, good heavens, no idea. Like if it's uh-huh. Zach Moss, then I'm not going to be starting Zach Moss, whether there's uh, Jonathan Taylor there or not. Uh, Brees Hall, I don't know. Uh, J.K. Dobbins, there's Gus Edwards. I don't feel like I love him as a starter if there's no J.K. Dobbins. So, not loving any of the obvious handcuffs. So, um, is there a different running back that I'm really invested in? No, it gets late early, as they say in fantasy drafts. I talk about this dude a lot. I feel like I was one of the earlier people in our business on him. Uh, I'll take Jalen Warren by the end of last year. I felt like he was the best running back on the Steelers. We'll just see, see, as they say, see how it plays out. Just see how it plays out. As someone who who spent a lot of his auction money on uh, the other guy, on that, who I refuse <laughs> to mention his name again, uh, I will not be taking that other guy. So I, I'm happy with Warren for you. I think. What auction league are you in? I'm in an auction league, you know, 25 year league. Like I'm in a 25 year league with you. Oh. Uh, but uh, uh, it used to be a, a a draft, but now it's it's the last 15 years or so. It's an auction. Okay, I think I knew and, of the uh, league. I I don't think I knew that it changed. And uh, it's definitely really running back heavy, you okay. know. Uh, uh, so Bijan's going for you know fifty percent of the auction budget, wow. uh, especially in Texas. <laughs> and uh, 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 but uh, last year, all the wide receivers, I'm, I'm sitting thinking I'm going in for you know uh, my two super wide receivers, and I didn't get any of them. I just couldn't go. You know, wide receivers went to, you know thirty five percent of the of the auction cap the, uh, over and over and over again. So I was shocked by how how, how the paradigm shifted. All right. Well, what are you going to do here? 12th well, it'll round. be a wide receiver. Uh, I don't like any of them. Yeah. Uh, Fair. Man, that guy's. I, I like. I, I like a certain guy, but it's way too early to take him. But he'll. Oh man. <laughs> <laughs> That's <laughs> pretty... the sound of the twelfth round. <laughs> yeah, especially with no with no uh, with no defense. defense and kickers. Right. Yeah. We're, we're 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 in the fourteenth and fifteenth round. Really. Agreed. Hmm. All right, I'm gonna just gonna take the guy I like. It's too early to take him, but I'm taking him. So, Curtis, Curtis Samuel. Samuel. Every year, someone's gonna take Curtis Samuel, and then is gonna be sad. <laughs> I'm not even gonna say why. They're just gonna be sad. <laughs> it's just the nature of drafting Curtis Samuel. I, he could I, be I'm, hurt. He could be unhappy. He could be lots of different things. I'm sure that there. I'm sure over the years there had to have been at least one team that I was actively managing that wasn't just like a mock draft that we didn't play or you know played it out, but don't really pay attention where I had Curtis Samuel. I can't think of it. <laughs> I can't think of it when he was in Carolina. I can't think of it. Now he's been in DC. I can't think of, I, I don't think I ever have him. All right. Round 13. Man, I could take my <laughs> handcuffs, handcuff. <laughs> Your handcuffs, handcuff. <laughs> uh, well, you've got, you've got uh, a wide receiver, heavy team for sure. You got two quarterbacks. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It do, it does seem like if you were going to take flyers in the in the zero RB uh, methodology, often it would be taking flyers on running backs. Are there nobody that is there nobody there that you would be like ah, I could take a bench flyer on that guy? Yeah, it's it's pretty soft right now. I mean, I could I could load up on more dolphins. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's the plan. I think we're just going to come out of this with you with the dolphins team. Jeff Wilson yeah. there. I love Jeff Wilson. He's a good player. I He's think it's fine. Player, yeah. He should be taken there. He's a, he's. I just listed him as a post-type sleeper on the podcast, not to be a spoiler for the people who haven't listened to that podcast yet. But uh, sure, why not? That's fine. He's a good player. Uh, I, I probably would have been interested in taking... I can't believe you didn't take Roshan Johnson. I mean, I know you didn't get to see him much at the University of Texas, but he did like have the long horn on his helmet. What's your problem, man? <laughs> Maybe I'm just slow to warm up to the idea of taking a Chicago running back, but, uh, but yeah. All right. Okay. 
Um, do we have any? I don't even want to say the position. No, the answer is we do not. Um, I'll take another quarterback. I think in this kind of league, you're right that a second quarterback is just fine. Uh, and also Burrow, you know, you don't want to, just in case it's horrible. Uh, so I'll take Goff. I don't know if you've heard, but Goff is a, a really good quarterback because he's in a really elite offense. Mm-hmm. No, he's not. No, he's not. No, he's not times two. He's Jared Goff. Um, that's what he is. He's Jared Goff. I mean, that's, that's, he's fine. Yeah, he's fine. Right. He's, he's fine. I, I would prefer Joe Burrow to be good at football this year. That would be great. <laughs> um, why, do I have any dudes late here that I want to take a shot on that I recognize as being badly ranked relative to my ranks? It's so hard to know. Again, down in the comments, feel free to say, dummy, you had that guy 40 on your list. You're, you're on pick 200. Why didn't you take him? Feel free to beat me up, uh, but I'm not, I'm not drafting with the benefit of that list. I'll take Jamison Williams because Jared Goff has to have somebody to throw to. That could be a, a, a <laughs> league-winning pairing, right? What a combo. I'm surprised you're able to get him. Really. But, uh, Amazing. Let's see. We're wrapping it up here. Late round. I mean, that's, the, you know, part of the reason people watch these videos is to get ideas about late round guys that we really love. And of course, like we said, the problem is with no kickers and no defenses, the guys we really love are gone. <laughs> not, not there anymore. So, so this guy actually made me some money last year. I'm just rewarding him for it in DFS. <laughs> oh, he made you literal he made money, in little DFS. money in DFS, you know, late okay. in the season when you're looking for the, when you're looking for the putt. And uh, here's my punt, my DFS punt. All right. Hodgins. I mean, there's a, ch- you know, who's the wide, that's the first Giants receiver to be taken, so who knows? Is, would he be uh, a, a likely candidate for you in a different draft to be your 14th round pick? Is, is he, does he pique your interest enough that it's not just random, that it's someone where you're like, ah, you know, I might do that yes. again? Yes, I, because I, I, I was following him a little more closely than I otherwise would have. I took him like three, three weeks in a row in, in DFS, and he did well. And uh, so, okay. but, you know, we'll see how he's, how, it's going to be how he starts the season. Cause these are all waivable players. Don't tell anybody, but you, these players might be waived. <laughs> of course. Yeah, absolutely. These are all, every, all, you know, your 15th round pick is, uh, is a very, very waivable player. No question. Should I take your tight end from last draft? My tight end from last might draft. Might also play quarterback. Our... Oh, 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 from, I thought you meant, I, I thought I was trying to think of a league from last year that you and I are in together. You meant actual last yes. week. Yeah. You can go ahead and feel free to do that if you choose. Man, that doesn't mind. feel right. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I, so, you know, uh, uh, a lot of, a lot of my, when I have to take kickers, I always draft guys that get cut in, can, in training camp. And, uh, <laughs> since I can't do that, maybe I'll take a guy who can get cut in training camp this year. Let's see if he can get cut. Let's do it. Let's see if he can get cut. Hunter Renfro. He could get cut. So I don't recommend I don't re- recommend doing it, folks. Right. So that's not. Hodgins is someone who you will be targeting in late rounds. Uh, Renfro is not someone who you're targeting in late rounds. Uh, and I would say other things being equal, Jameson Williams, if I have the luxury of waiting the, uh, the suspension, I don't, I don't mind. I mean, my issue with Jameson Williams is I don't really know what he is as a player. He's very, barely played in the NFL, but you know, the promise of what he was coming into the league feels like it's still there. He's got the pedigree. Hopefully. So, uh, yeah, that's the thought. Um, gosh, what am I going to do? It's so hard to, Oh, what the, <laughs> <No>. <laughs> what the heck? I did it, Craig. Now I feel dirty we, for we you. May have, <laughs> we may have to see whether, I mean, you're kidding me. He's got, a point and a half per reception as a tight end. Are you kidding you me? Throw it that's seven points. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's seven points all season. Um, that was, that was a little bit of a gag, but maybe not, maybe not. I mean, bye weeks get heavy. He's very cuttable. He's very waveable. All right. Last player for me. Uh, is there anybody like with the fun upside to just say, what if, you know, I, I, I could see the argument for Chase Brown, but we're hearing that he's behind Chris Evans. He's behind Captain America. So I'm probably not interested in that. Um, boy, 
I don't love anybody left, obviously. And is, there's nobody who I've obviously been grabbing in every draft here that's left. I've grabbed this guy a couple of times. I don't know that much about him because he didn't play that much last year. But I do have a suspicion that the Patriots are just going to monkey around with our backfield like they always do because Ramondre Stevenson can't have nice things. And maybe there's a vote there that Pierre Strong is the guy. I thought at least last year when they were playing a little bit, I thought Strong looked better than Kevin Harris. Now, you know, Dalvin Cook signs there, and I'm completely out of luck. But I have gotten strong in a few drafts, so I'll put a vote in for him here. And now we come down to your very last pick. Uh, I'm going to take the Dallas tight end. You know, see what, see what, see if he, uh, I get to watch him, see if he turns is, out, right? See if he. Is it, is it the right I one? I don't even know. I mean, didn't the, didn't the rookie just get passed by No, I'm not the taking guy? the rookie. I'm taking, I'm taking the oh, second year. You're going to take, you're going to take Ferguson. Yeah, yeah that's, uh, we have certainly heard that. Ferguson. I mean, it's not a shock. Rookie, like there was a news item yesterday that the Steeler rookie, Dwayne Washington, is looks like a red zone weapon. Like, no, he doesn't. He's rookies go away. Yeah. So we don't have to worry about rookie tight ends that often. Uh, we've done it, Craig. We've done it. Uh, I hope you had fun doing this. What do you think of your team overall? You still uh, have that glow about you that you're very happy with. I got Bijan, man. Two thousand rough raw scrimmage yards. <laughs> nothing could go wrong. I mean, that's nothing compared to J.K. Dobbins' twenty four hundred, but you know. Yeah, he'll be second on the list. <laughs> I'm You're happy. happy. Yeah, I, uh, you know, I didn't get the quality of wide receiver. I did want Samuel, so I got Samuel. Uh, the, I got a lot of wide receivers, so I'm gonna have I'm gonna have options. I didn't get any of the top eight, you know, wide receivers that uh, I think there's a pretty clear tier there. Uh, but uh, I knew when I took Bijan, I wasn't gonna get one. So. Sure. I mean, especially picking mm-hmm. where you're picking, right? Like, it just that's some, somewhat the luck of the draw. Um, Debo is a is an interesting case to be going in a tight end he- premium league, full PPR. That is not Debo's preferred format, but if he's the Debo that he was two years ago, he's quite literally a league right. winner. And I think this is a this is a vote of you saying you believe. I believe it's possible that he'll go back to some. I believe it's like thirty five forty percent. I mean, we, that, right? well said because we don't know what's going to happen. We don't know the usage plan. I mean, he didn't do that with Christian McCaffrey there, so maybe the running back role just isn't there for him anymore. But I agree with you a hundred percent that it's still it's still in the realm of possible outcomes, which you can't say for a lot of guys that you're taking in the third round. Um, as for my team, sure, good good team, happy. Uh, everybody's already gotten out of their system, making fun of me for the Nick Chubb pick down in the <laughs> comments. Like that happened like 45 minutes ago. So uh, now, now we can all just focus on the rest of it. Uh, I, I'm, I'm pleased. I mean, it requires Jonathan Taylor to be a Colt and not be injured and that we're dealing with very imperfect information, but for where I got him, happy to do it. Uh, getting Burrow where I get him. We talked about it. Feels rather silly. Uh, Devontae Adams has some question marks. So this is a high risk team. I feel like it's the second week in a row where I've had some risk baked in, but uh, this this is going to be a fairly representative team. This is what the vague makeup in general that I can imagine a lot of my teams taking on. But we would love to know what you who have watched this video think of our respective teams, uh, picks, uh, thoughts, anything uh, in this particular format. Uh, Craig, having gone through it, do you do you personally play in any one point five? Uh, per Never reception points once. for it's, tight ends. It's, it's an interesting uh, little wrinkle uh, when you set it. Yeah, it is. Oh. And it definitely, yeah, it definitely immediately goes, oh, 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 oh. So now, now I really do one of the, want one of those five guys, is it? I mean, it's an argument about how many guys it is. Uh, but like we said, Hawkinson, I think Goddard is definitely in that realm. I personally wouldn't put would Pitts be. in that realm, but I understand, I understand the upside there. I would put Waller probably ahead of Pitts, but then I'm kind of yeah. out. So in this kind of premium format, if that's what the folks watching are playing, I think you you really should try to get one of those. What did I say? Six right. names. And so you, so know. you had to basically uh, Goddard went in sixth. So you had to you had to use a six round pick or better, probably a fourth round pick if well, it's a, if if what you're thinking about doing it is. So you, that's that's right. I, I can't imagine what Waller was the first pick in the seventh round. Like I can't imagine Waller Goddard go sixth round, seventh round in most tight end premium mm-hmm. leagues. I think that's much more of a fifth, fifth round kind of thing and, and f- makes it fun. Like makes it, you know, I'm just flat out not thinking tight end in the first three, four rounds in any other kind of format, but it makes it, it's just anything that mixes it up. Yeah. And mock team five is thinking two tight ends. <laughs> mock team five's like, I know who my starting tight end is. I know who my flex is. Bring on the point and a half every single game and uh, watch me score. And who knows? It could work out uh, with the running backs of Miles Sanders and James Conner. Maybe. 
Maybe. Uh, well, okay, uh, we want to thank AG1 for sponsoring. If you enjoyed this and you've heard me talk about AG1 in the past, drink ag1.com slash Harris. I uh, would love it if you try it out. I take it every single morning. I wake up, it's dark outside here in the yacht, and uh, and I slug down the AG1 and, and, and uh, feel like I'm getting uh, great nutrition, and especially for gym stuff, I really feel like it. it's great. Um, Craig, thank you for doing it. I hope you had fun. Dave Piper, you're an awesome producer. Thank you for doing this. Thanks, everybody, for watching. I hope you will um, subscribe to the channel and hit the little bell so that they alert you when we post a new video, which we, doing, we are doing regularly throughout August, and we will see you next time. Bye. Thanks so much for watching. Please, please, please smash that like button, write a comment, tell us who else you'd like to see us review film on, and of course, best of all, please subscribe to our channel and then click that little bell above the subscribe button and you'll be notified whenever we post a new video.